coming up on Animal Anomalies. We all know Australia has kangaroos. We all know China has pandas. We all know the lions of Africa. But what about those animals that go under the radar? What about those animals that you wouldn't associate with that place? Animals so rare, only a handful of people see them. You may not know they are here, but they live among us. My name is Cookie, and this is Animal Anomalies UK, the red-necked wallaby. Welcome along back to Animal Anomalies everybody and this time we are in search of an animal that is native range is 10,000 miles away. The redneck wallaby or Bennett's wallaby is usually found in its native home of Australia. Their name rather aptly describes how they look. They have a reddish tinge to their shoulders, neck and back region. These little cuties are often mistaken for kangaroos because they're both marsupials, they both look very similar and they both hop. The easiest way to tell the difference between a wallaby and a kangaroo though is generally their size. Wallabies are much smaller in comparison to kangaroos. They are here in this country or a part of the Great British Isles. The Isle of Man has a booming population which is descended from just a pair that escaped a wildlife park. In Scotland, on an island in the middle of Loch Lomond, there's supposedly a small colony of wallabies there too, which was first introduced in the 1940s by a person called Lady Aaron Colhoun. There aren't like exact figures for how many wallabies are there, but the estimates suggest it could be anywhere up to 50. Now, those who are familiar with my channel you may have seen this video before wallabies exist here in the uk now that video came about after i was just browsing through youtube and i saw a video of a wallaby in kent and then as i was scripting that video another one was seen in neath in wales did some research and i found an albino one in northamptonshire Well, that got me to do some research into the subject and after a few lengthy emails, a lot of radio silence and a lot of people with the attitude of just no, I've managed to locate some wild wallabies living freely in England. But I'm not allowed to film there. Yeah, that's right. I'm not allowed to film there. Now, I won't reveal the location, but basically it's a bit of land that I've asked permission to film on and they've said no. There are no barriers, fences, gates, nothing. They're wild and free, but you're just going to have to trust me. They're in England happily. The next thing for me would be to have a look at Scotland, the island that supposedly has them on. The island isn't overly big, but it's like 35 hectares, which is it's like 40 or 50 football fields, isn't it? So that is quite big. Like these guys could be hiding and I would never see them ever. So I don't, it's a difficult one. But before we go to Scotland, I'm going to go to a zoo that definitely has them and I'm going to take a look at them. We're going to go to Whipsnade where they roam free around the park. So we're here at Whipsnade Zoo because the wallabies live here, but they roam free around the park. So they've got no designated area. So we've got to be on the search now to have a look, see if we can find them. Now Whipsnade Zoo is massive. So it might be a bit of a struggle to find them even in this area, but we're going to give it a go. We're going to have a look and just, I mean, I hope we see one here. Cause if we don't see one here, what chances have we got for the big one? We find ourselves a wallaby, it's just under here. Cause it's so busy in the park today. I think they're all like hiding away from the people as I would if I was a wallaby as well. This is the sort of environment we'd expect to see one of those and it's so so difficult to spot them um you probably can't even see it right now and he's like what 10 meters away it's not far away at all and they just blend in so well so after hanging out with this little cutie for a bit we went exploring around the park until we came across this sign when i read it it basically says to me that wallabies amongst other animals were released to graze it then goes on to say that they've now been replaced by sheep now What's interesting for me, all those animals have been released, wallabies included. Could they be out there where we're looking right now? Who knows? But I think the most concrete proof that we could get is on an island in Scotland. So I think that's what we're gonna do. 
but it's really cool to see this guy, to know what we're looking for, and to know the task ahead is going to be super hard. Okay, something interesting has just happened. I've just got a phone call to say someone thinks they've seen a dead wallaby on the side of a road. <laughs> About five miles away from where I live. So right now, I am heading out there. I need to see, is this the Warwickshire wallaby? I'm excited. It could be a deer. I'm very aware of that, but what if it's not? What if it is a wallaby? Like, it's literally gone. Just got, <laughs> it's just got past nine o'clock in the morning. I was fast asleep, got the phone call. I was like, okay, I'm going. Okay, so I'm sort of getting near to where it should be or where this person said it was. Now it's exciting, but I'm trying not to get too excited because it could be a deer. The person on the phone said I was excited, but I could have got it wrong. So it's one of those we'll have to see, but I'm just trying to just trying to calm, calm myself, calm myself. There is this thing in Warwickshire called the Warwickshire Wallaby. People said they've seen kangaroos, wallabies knocking about in this exact area where this has been reported to me. So I'm really hopeful that it fits in line with that sort of conspiracy, that mystery we have around here. And it would just be mad. It would be so mad to see. As much as I don't want to see a dead wallaby, I really hope it is because the Warwickshire wallaby will be a real thing then. Okay, I think there's an animal here on the side of the road. Is this it? It's got, it's got to be it. Oh my God, I think it is. Oh my God, I think it is. I need to pull over. I need to pull over. Oh my God. It looks like a wallaby. Okay, I need to pull over and double check because I, I was driving past. I can't see. But on that turn then, it looked good. But it, it could be a deer. It could be a little muntjac deer. Oh, don't get excited. Oh, no. It's a muntjac. Okay, I'm going to show you. Gore. So, from there, it looks like, looks like it could have been a wallaby. But it's not. I look like a freak on the side of this road. Sorry for his head, but that's it. What got me was the ears look close together and the colour. Redneck wallabies have obviously got that red tinge down their back. That ain't a redneck wallaby, that's a muntjac. And he's, uh, he's not in his best situation, I'm not gonna lie. But I got excited as I drove past. I could understand why the person who phoned me got excited, but it's not to be. <laughs> It is a muntjac. Uh, with a wallaby, the ears are close together on top of their head. Just the way that's been like left there in the road, its ears have gone close to its head. Obviously its head smashed in and it's been killed. But uh, it's not to be on this occasion, unfortunately. Oh, but yeah, there we go. Looks can be deceiving if you only get a short glimpse. Um, is what it is though, I suppose. Now though, if I want to go see a real one, should probably go out of Scotland. Lot of nests in that. Oh, look. It's over there. Oh, it's gone now. You missed it. So we've come to Scotland specifically to look for the wallabies, but while we're here, we wanted to look for the other species of animals that are here as well. Red squirrels being one of them, and they're in the trees behind us. I've never seen a red squirrel, so this is really, really exciting for me to have a look at. Amazing to see a little animal that's been decimated, really, in England. is still doing well over in Scotland. How cool is that? I am drawing a map of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Do you want to see it? <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is Lutz. This is where we have to go to. Uh, there's a car park here. We're going to park our car. We're going to walk all the way to the pier. We're going to meet a fella. He's going to get on a boat with us and he's going to drive us all the way out this way, all the way through this gap to this little bit here. Now that bit is the lead up to an abandoned house. How exciting is that, right? So we get off there to the abandoned house, 
and we're going to go into the abandoned house, have a look around. And this little swirly bit, can we see this little swirly bit, yeah? This little swirly bit is the summit of the island, the tallest part of the island. And I've got a little thing about wallabies that I'm going to talk to you about when we're there. But we're going to head to the summit, see what we can see. Oh yeah, that's Lock Ness Monster. <laughs> She's in Lock Lomond. Big up Nessie in that, I believe. So what do you think are, what do you think the chances are? Do you think there's still going to be some there? When you said last time we might not see him, I came here like, well, what's he on about? We're on an island, we're going to see him, of course we are. And then obviously we've spoken to people and they've been like, yeah, I've never seen one. Yeah. And now I'm like, what? Can yeah, you... I've seen, well, we've spoken to a few people and they've all said the same thing, haven't they? Yeah. But I like, thought, I thought, it, I just thought, you know, an island and they're on there, we're bound to see him. But everyone that we spoke to has been like, yeah, I go there all the time and I've never seen one. And that's really like, that's... It's hard to hear because we've come here with like, I think quite naive in yeah. terms of like going to an island, we're going to see one, it's going to be like going to the zoo. And uh, judging by what people, the locals have said, it's going to be really difficult, but I don't know. I feel like with our plan, foolproof plan, I think we're going to do it. I hope so. I, I just, I hope they're there. I, I think they'll be there. I just, it sounds like they're hard to see. I think we'll do it. I've just looked at the weather forecast. It's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good at all. Um, we've got to gear up and I think that camera might suffer so we might need to sort something out there. We've got a bag. We've got some scissors. I'm going to try and put the bag on the camera so you can still see it. Okay. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Does that, does that look good? I haven't done the screen very well. Like, you can... I mean, you can sort of see it out. The microphone's all, it sticks out. <laughs> and then we got that one. But that, mate, Bear Grylls, if you're looking, eh? I was thinking, we um, probably should have just bought an umbrella from Morrison's and put it under an umbrella. Oh yeah. This is, this is a view, isn't it? Kate's in the other room. And I haven't told her, but like, really quite concerned. We've spoken about just under like 10 people and not one person who has been to the island has said they've seen them and that's really concerning me you know and I feel like this might be the first animal anomalies where I don't find them and that'd be that'd be heartbreaking like I mean I've only done two so far with the scorpions and the the parakeets but we found them and I feel like this is the first one where it's this is hard this is going to be, this is going to be difficult, and uh, I'm trying not to be negative, but I'm just going to have to see what, what happens come tomorrow, but <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to, I don't want to end in failure, you know? So now we're here on the island, uh, we've got to be quite quiet. Uh, it's about half 10 and wallabies are crepuscular, which basically means they're most active at dawn and dusk. Uh, we've gone past the dawn stage and we're not going to see the dusk stage. So we've got to be on the lookout because they're going to be, they're going to be sleeping. They're going to be chilling. They're just going to be like having a rest and all that. So we've got to be very careful. So we set out on our way, looking out for any signs of wallabies on the island. It wasn't long until we stumbled across a point of interest though. So we're in Lady Colhoun's house. There's a beautiful mural on the wall. If you want to see a full video of this abandoned house, then you're going to have to head over to the second channel and look for it there. Do a comprehensive tour of this building and the building outside of that way. But now though, let's go look for some wallabies. Sticking with the plan, we decided to head up the small summit of the island. going up to the top of this hill is a uh, I think wallabies tend to prefer a higher altitude I'm not overly sure if that's the right idea if that's the right thing but typically 
when I've been in Australia, I've been at a zoo, I've been anywhere like that, they prefer the high ground than the low ground. Just what I've seen, so that's what we're going to attempt. Okay, uh, Katie's actually gone somewhere. I don't know where she's gone, but I'm pretty sure through here. I just heard something hop. Right here. We are in the right spot, 100%. We're around the right area. Okay, this right here is Wallaby Scat, so poo. This is a really good sign for us. Just behind that tree there, I'm pretty sure I heard something hop. Now, if we've just scared it off in this like last few minutes, it's a really good sign that we're close, okay? This is a really good sign for us that we're in the right area, searching for the right thing <laughs> uh, at the right time. We got ourselves to the summit and had a look around. No wallabies in sight, but a lot of scat had been left behind. We decided to stake the place out. We perched up next to a big tree and began our waiting game in the hope a wallaby would unknowingly hop to us. It looks like our stake out hasn't worked. We're going to go for another search now. But time's running out. Let's see what happens. So we've, uh, we've been at this now for a few hours. We haven't got one yet. We haven't seen one. We've seen scat. Quite a lot of scat. No wallabies though. Not long ago too, we just saw a few people, three people to be precise, who have been on the island for a few days now. They haven't seen a wallaby. So not getting my hopes up now. If they haven't seen one and they've been here a few days, what chance have we got in a few hours? It's behind the tree. It's behind the tree. There is, there is. No, oh, I think I missed it. It's just gone running through there. That's so annoying. We're so close. This moss is so thick. I'm sorry. <sighs> Get him.
It was so great to see that this animal is in this country and thriving. As far as I'm concerned, they are a very welcome addition to the wildlife population. This is what Animal Anomalies is all about, showcasing the excitement and intrigue of searching for rare and elusive animals. Animals that go under the radar, animals that most of us don't know are here. Showing you how beautiful each individual being is and spurring people on to get out there and enjoy the anomalies while we still can. Let's get a big like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and let's share this one around too with people who don't know wallabies are here. I've been Cookie and this has been Animal Anomalies, the redneck wallaby. Look at that. <laughs> oh, he's so beautiful. Oh my word. Is he going to go again? No, oh, I scratched him.